So, um, I give a short introduction um, of the guys. You have met Lukas. He just presented the Pure Maven um, thing of uh, building stuff. Then you might know this guy, which is uh, Kai Kreuzer, obviously. Um, and he's advocating for the um, yeah, state we have right now, so building everything with Tyco and a PDE plugin in Eclipse. And then please meet BJ. He's with Java from the beginning. He's with OSGI from the beginning. He is with BND, I guess, from the beginning. So he's a deep technical expert and obviously advocating for BND. And uh, as we heard already about BND and as we heard already about the way to build with Maven, I would uh, give Kai the chance to maybe summarize the state we have right now in the build with Tyco and maybe some initial arguments why we should stay with the state. Well, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Um, so, well, I didn't present because uh, I think every developer of Eclipse Smart Home knows how that stuff works and that it works. And that's actually the most important thing. Never touch a working system, so why should we change anything if there isn't really any huge pain for everyone? And um, I see it's working. It was a lot of work to get it all working, and I don't think that this work was due to the complexity of Maven and Tyco, but due to the complexity of doing continuous integration and builds in general, including testing. So I doubt that uh, whatever the other guys will promise, that by switching in a one-day uh, task, just changing some POMs and uh, doing something, that everything will miraculously work. But it will end up in a month-long project, uh, leading to new kinds of issues nobody has ever seen before, and uh, which simply slows down the whole development of Eclipse Smart Home from the functional point of view and really keeps us just busy with ourselves on the build stuff. So. For me, everything's fine with Tyco. Uh, we know this technology. We are based on OSGI, and so um, if I understood Lucas right, he says, well, more or less, we should get rid of OSGI because nobody uses it. But we, <laughs> we, are, use it, uh, we are using it, and so I think we should also make use of it uh, in the best way we can so that it serves our purposes that we have. Okay, uh, so what I understand is that you want to that you make the, this OSGI part the, the first look at all the, at all the bundles and at the build setup, and you are afraid of yeah, changing to a maybe faster solution, maybe more stable solution. <laughs> no, honestly, I, I'm, I'm actually saying maybe, because um, as Kai mentioned, we wouldn't, wouldn't, don't know the pain we would get with a new solution, but as I also understand it, you are afraid of the migration path. So maybe one of the other guys uh, can take this one on and maybe show how a migration to so BND tools, in, in your case, would uh, look like. Yeah, also, I, since it's my first chance to talk to the group, I, and the people had some good discussion, we had to talk about BND and, and Maven. Um, I'd like to just also just clarify a few things too, right? So. We pair of BND. BND is many things, right? So whether you use Maven or whether you use Gradle or whether you use Eclipse, at the end of the day, BND is in there making your bundle, right? It's making the manifest. It's under everything. So no matter what you do, you're using BND, guaranteed, right? Even if you know you're using BND. So the question then is, who is driving your build? What command are you running to run your build, right? So BND has Maven plugins. So if you want to have a pure Maven build, mm -hmm. by all means, you can set yourself up palms out the ass all the way and run Maven under there. We've got plugins to build your bundle, to baseline your bundle, to index your code so you can push it into an, an export runnable <laughs> jars. That's fine. If you want to run a Gradle to drive your build as a traditional Gradle build, structured however a normal Gradle build is, we've got Gradle plugins to do the same exact thing. We can make your bundle, we can index your bundles, we can export your bundles, we can resolve your bundles. We have plugins to do all that too. Now, 
what we saw before with BND is a slightly different view of the build, in which case it's not a Maven-driven build or a Gradle-driven build, but it's a BND-driven build, and that BND dictates the structure of the build, how the files are laid out with the CNF folder. And from the command line, we, since Gradle is much more flexible than Maven, we can use Gradle to, to operate that build for us. So that's the, the big difference. But you don't have to structure your build to look like the example that was shown. You can leave it in the same exact structure it is in now, leave it as a Maven build, but convert it to a real proper Maven build to get all the benefits that were mentioned here, that they're real normal POMs and people can integrate with them and stop putting things in silly P2 repositories, put them in proper real Maven repositories. Because as much as you know, there are Maven haters in the world, mm -hmm. everybody understands the value of a Maven repository, right? So everyone who hates Maven accepts that Maven repositories are great, right? Okay, I have one question. So you say uh, BMD is used by all three of them. Uh, are you treating them all equal, or are there, are there certain pros and cons for Maven or Gradle or whatever? Well, at the bottom of the... Um, excuse me. Um, can sorry. you just simply oh, repeat the, the, the question so we have it on the... On yeah, the sure. Email. So I think the question was, basically, since BMD is used underneath all of these things, is it acting equally in all cases? Uh, and the answer basically is at the bottom, yes, right? There's, there's a BND has this thing called BND lib, and it's, it's basically does the building. It analyzes the class files, computes the import packages, processes the annotations into declarative services XML, and re regardless of whether you're using Eclipse or using Gradle or using Maven, at the end of the day, all of those things drill down to BND lib, and he does the magic. So it doesn't really matter which way you want to build your code, Maven, Gradle, whatever, at the end of the day, pretty much every tool has settled on BND lib at the bottom, right? So if you go out to the universe of all the Maven plugins that build bundles, BND lib is underneath all of them. If you go out into the universe of all the Gradle plugins that build bundles, BND lib is at the bottom of all of those too, uh, right? And so, and of course, the BND project itself, as an open source project, we are now providing our own Gradle bundles and our own Maven models. And I just learned yesterday that Gradle 5 is deprecating their own OSGI plugin and pointing people at our BND plugin for Gradle. So, uh, to come back to, to maybe Kai's pain point, because right. from, from what I understand, you, you're not strictly against using a different build tool set, but you are afraid of the, as I said, migration, so it would last half a year, uh, eat up resources, and yeah, just slow down the whole project. Well, I, but I think that the, the answer to that is that tools are code. They're just as important as any other piece of code in your project, your build environment, right? If you don't maintain it and upgrade it and modernize it, it's just increasing technical debt that you're ignoring, right? Your tools are your greatest force multiplier for your developers. And if you don't give them great tools, you're making everyone suffer all the time. Right, and as near as I can tell, PDE is near unmaintained, right? There's no one advancing it. And I'm guessing Tyco is probably in a similar boat, right? So they're just going to age ungracefully. Uh, so <laughs> Definitely not. So the latest uh, Eclipse release uh, train this summer that brought a lot of uh, new features into the PDE UI and tooling and everything. And I think uh, the SAP guys are also still quite involved in the Tyco development. There are regularly new releases and uh, fixes, so I think that, that definitely goes uh, well into the future. And my main point is, why should we spend effort? Uh, so what are the benefits, and don't we really lose anything on such a migration? And um, one of the, just a second. <laughs> I have four minutes left, you know. <laughs> One of the main features that I see is going to be dropped, and which is the main feature for myself, actually, is that you can easily start up your whole runtime in the IDE, debug it in there, work on the source code, and have that right in the IDE directly. And I don't see how that's going to work with any of the other approaches. Sadly, I didn't have enough of time to show that uh, such feature is possible to be run. And uh, actually, the build is the core of every system, and the changes in the build system are always painful. There are no ways to make it soft. 
That's that's clear, and uh, I would lie you if I would say that uh, it will be a easy meal. It's not. It, changing and flipping the build is always a pain. It's like going to the doctor. Sometimes you have to, and uh, th that's it, right? One way or other, this pain will have to be uh, taken. And uh, just prolonging the way how it is done with Tycho doesn't improve the situation because this cancer continues to grow. And <laughs> and. Uh, and uh, I can tell, for example, that uh, Tyco doesn't support parallel builds, and uh, that's one of the things which can s uh, speed up slow Maven. I mean, I know it's slow, but also it's easier for tool makers, IDE makers, to import projects which are made with Maven. So the major benefit is the dependency information for outside world. And uh, for example, Eclipse uh, Foundation started to publish their Maven artifacts to the repositories, but some of the projects still miss the Maven dependency information, which represents a problem for guys who tries to use it. So the problem which I am actually aiming to or, or trying to solve is visibility of the project structure and its dependencies to the outside world. You mean this totally long POM that you showed at the end with all kind of Maven dependencies, that, that's nicer than just a very short manifest with package dependencies, which are the real ones, because we don't have module dependencies, but package dependencies. And who are the users who use Eclipse Smart Home Artifacts outside of an OSGI world, because the dependency information is in the manifest, and if you use OSGI tooling, this is available, and it's red. You don't need that as a Maven dependency. I have just one sentence. <laughs> so before you will ever run anything under OSGI, you have first to compile it. And for compilation, it matters. Yeah, that, uh, that's another issue with PDE, is uh, PDE has a manifest-first approach, which is backwards. Right. The manifest is a class file. It's, a, it's an artifact generated by the build process. Uh, you need other instructions to drive that, right? And in the Maven world, that's a POM. In the BND tools world, it's a BND file, right? And one of, and sort of, uh, uh, but there is, all of these choices are engineering trade-offs, right? There's no perfect choice, right? Even in the Maven world, they conflate um, the things you build against with the things you run against, right? Because your dependencies end up on your runtime, uh, whereas in BND tries to separate that through a, uh, and where you have a BND based build, like the example that we saw before, that we have a build path which is disjoint from your manifest, right? So you might have 18 different jar files on your build path from which you use three packages. And so that your manifest only references the three packages. But then it is hard then to take that after the fact and say, well, how do I, what are my dependencies to build a thing against this? Uh, and so nothing is perfect, um, but I do think that you're far better off moving to some system which has a broader applicability than PDE and Tyco, because PDE and Tyco are used only in the Eclipse world. Nobody really uses them anywhere else, right? So it's a vanishingly small uh, audience as a tool audience, right? So it's not going to get the same level of attention and investment that Maven gets, or that Gradle gets, right? Maven, of course, is the big dog in the room. Everyone and their brother uses Maven. Uh, you know, a couple of guys use Gradle, but you know, that PDE wasn't even on that chart and never will be on that chart. <laughs> so maybe you guys can address this pain the migration. So do you have a solution for a migration which, uh, which Kai then would say, okay, I'm convinced, you offer me a solution doing this in two weeks, and uh, in two weeks we no, no, are... No no, 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 wait. I don't need to be convinced about the migration that that's smooth. I'm still not convinced about any benefit at the end. Okay, so... So, so um, <laughs> the build time. The build time doesn't matter too much. It's, it's not right that... Uh, uh, the Tyco doesn't have an offline mode. There is actually one. You would just have to go through it. It, it, uh, it also works to do uh, parallel builds with Tyco, so all of that uh, actually is possible. Uh, no, the audience discussion will be afterwards. Yep. Sorry, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> we will take all of, all of your questions and comments 
after the panel discussion. But I, but I do think the build time is important, right? That's, a, that's, again, a force multiply for a developer. The faster they can turn around a build and test it, the more productive they can be. If every time they start a build, it's time to get a coffee, they'll be over-caffeinated all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I can measure that on my old laptop, which takes 30 seconds to start Maven build. I get distracted during this time, and uh, I just go to the news page. And uh, there's another thing. Oh, but I died. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I'm there. To try to try it again. Hello. Okay. Here we are. There is one more thing about the testing. Uh, someone in the internet had the very nice presentation about crazy fast tests about testing this stuff. If you cannot run your tests easily, people start to skip them. And if they start to skip them, the quality of the code base goes down. So if you can run unit tests together with your build, and with Tyco you cannot, uh, then you are in the big troubles over time. No, absolutely false. Because as I said, the main feature that brings developer productivity is that you can do the stuff out of your IDE. You don't have to go to the command line to run a build and to run tests there. And we have a launch configs for all the tests. You can run them directly from the IDE. And what you can really run is uh, the whole system. And that's not possible for BND tools, as far as I know. And for your case, you're just claiming it works. It might work in the commercial version of IntelliJ, maybe. I wouldn't know how that would work in Eclipse. And as an Eclipse project, I somehow feel that it should at least work in Eclipse as well. And uh, so this is, for me, a killer in developer productivity if I can't debug and run the stuff directly from my IDE, including tests, including everything. Well, I will say that BND Tools has very good fidelity with that because you can actually fire up a framework with your bundles in it and you can be in the IDE, you can edit the code, hit save, and it will automatically build your bundle, update it in the running framework, and, and immediately restart it. So you can turn this stuff around instantly in the IDE. It's a very, very productive environment. So my stuff is not that beautiful. It runs. <laughs> uh, I'm an honest guy, and uh, I have no reason to lie to you about anything. But the main thing is that at some day, at some point, you have to run Maven build, or build in the command line. And this is the common ground for everyone. And uh, of course, IDE is a very convenient way to run the stuff. But at the end of the day, CI doesn't care about the IDE. That's the first thing. So the better configuration for the CI is, the better it is. The IDE is nice add-on. And of course, productivity-wise, it's always can be improved, and I really admired how it works with the PDE. And I have also to say that I never run any of the launch configurations which were prepared, simply because I don't really think that running it in this way makes any possibility here. For example, I, um, w with this simplistic approach, I can mark all the tests and just run them in any IDE. And it doesn't really depend on the IntelliJ. It will run in the same way in the Eclipse because it's still Java test. It doesn't start external process. Actually, on your point there, one of the new things we have in, in BND, which hasn't got a lot of exercise yet, but we do have a JUnit framework for OSGI. So you actually, as a plain JUnit test, you can run it, and it will start up the framework and run the parts and run the tests and then tear itself back down again. So it's that model you talked about where JUnit runs OSGI, not OSGI runs JUnit. So we have the start of that already in BND. Uh, and it, we, you know, the bulk of the tests were written before that, so we haven't ever converted them the other way, but you can write new tests in that manner. Yeah. So as you can see from different ecosystems and from different points of view, we came to the same conclusion. <laughs> so you came to the conclusion that you're actually in favor of BND now. <laughs> yeah? Okay, cool. So we have one, <laughs> we, we dropped one option. <laughs> I'm just uh, to add this Maven bundle plugin, which was shown on the slides, runs BND lib under the hood. And uh, honestly, I don't care which plugin generates the manifest. The most important is the dependency information for outside world, for external users who wants to build their small, tiny extension and run it as fast as possible 
in the environment. So for them, it's much more important to compile their stuff than to actually generate the manifest and maintain it. And if you ever asked anyone about you know, making the extension, everyone says, yeah, it was problematic in the beginning to understand all the factors and synchronize everything together. And myself, even as an experienced guy, I sometimes forget about updating one or second file, which is actually a problem for a newcomer which doesn't understand how it works. So making long story short, we should actually focus on being open for new guys to come because we know how many extensions we have, but we don't know how many we do not have because guys were scared of the tooling. Okay, but if we would switch to BND, then people have to learn about BND files and so on, so that's another complexity and nobody knows about BND because they are all doing pure Maven, so that, that won't help in that respect. But um, as I'll hand over to you, BJ, let me just mention one other thing I came across when I tried to actually move OpenHub IDE to BND ones, which is the fact that I'm very used to the fact that I have my Eclipse workspace and I can assemble it in the way I like the workspace. I can import other projects that might be a dependency normally, but uh, I want to actually debug them, I want to change code on them, so I just import these projects in my workspace as well. And BND seems to fail on that completely, so there's no way to actually have different repositories and the projects uh, in the same workspace then. Okay, I'll get to your point in a second, but to go back to the first comment I wanted to make, yes, you're right, having to learn how to write BND files is a thing, and ideally we don't want people to do that. So one of the things we've been working on and are continuing to work on in BND is to be much more annotation driven. Right, so the example we saw before, we had a package version in it, but in the end, his BND file, he had the export package instruction. Today, we would say, do not, don't do that. Put an export annotation in your package info right next to your at version, and then you don't even need a BND file. It's completely annotation driven. So we've, we're far down that path, and we have intentions to go further, so, so that the, at the end of the day, when all this is said and done, all you should really have to do in your Maven POM is to put in the BND Maven plugin, and the rest of it's all annotation driven out of your source code. You don't have to write a single BND instruction to get it to work. We're not all there yet, but we're getting pretty close. Uh, so, and then on to your point, structuring. How do I structure my workspace? Again, that's, uh, there's a, you have a choice there too with using BND. Like I said, BND can run under Maven build or a tr traditional Gradle build, or you can use what we call the BND workspace model, which is the example we saw before. If you use the BND workspace model, it has a certain set of benefits and a certain set of costs, and one of those is structure. Uh, if, but if you want to use a traditional Maven structure, with you can organize it into deep trees you like and, and import things however you want. It's, that's on you for using uh, Maven. And we do actually have some pretty fair support now in Eclipse for Maven builds that use the BND plugins. Uh, so you can actually uh, r launch files and debug them and all that sort of stuff. And in fact, uh, there's a session that's going to be here by Tim Ward on the update to OSGI and Route, which is sort of our get to know and learn OSGI programming. Mm -hmm. And it's been completely redone as Maven. It was Gradle in the last release under the BND workspace model. But we've recognized that we're, that's a fight we're never going to win. So we accept the inevitability of Maven and we've re <laughs> redone this. And so it's a pure Maven-based build using all of the BND plugins, and it's you know it's, we've got Maven archetypes and all sorts of stuff. So we're very aggressively supporting Maven in the BND project now. I have nothing more to add. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. I have um, the feeling that we're coming to an end. So, do you guys want to wrap it up? So maybe in two sentences each, and then we will uh, close the official panel, and then we can take questions from the audience, I guess. So, Kai. I would have hoped that you do the summary as what you oh. understood here from the discussion, but uh, well, for me, the, the wrap-up is, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, Maven is cool, BND is cool. Um, so we use the Maven support in BND, which is 
very recently added because nobody wanted to use BND with Cradle, and uh, which uh, isn't tested and which will bring a much more instable build to Eclipse Smart Home for sure. So that's my short summary. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, from okay. my side, uh, so there is a certain value in publishing complete Maven poems, and uh, uh, the way how manifests are generated are minor detail to, 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 from my point of view. So it, for publishing the dependency information, we need Maven. It's necessary evil from some point of view. And uh, Gradle would be cool, it would be faster, but we also have to stick with the mainstream. Then that's the point. And from the BND point of view, I think that I use Maven, use Gradle, I, but I do think you need to pick one of those, right? I think PDE and Maven Tyco is too bespoke and too out of the mainstream for deeper penetration, right? One of the problems that we see constantly with Eclipse is they keep putting their stuff in P2 repos, and the world wants to see things in Maven repos, right? So P2 has to be taken out, back, and shot. Uh, it really needs to go away. It's, it's just too weird. And so we need to stop using it and use what everyone else uses. <laughs> okay, thanks. So <clears throat> I want to add, so we have the Tyco PDE build and it just works. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks.